In the headlines, NLC rejects NNPC fuel price template as queues persist. Fuel sells for 670 naira in Katsana. Residents ask President Buhari, Bu, President Tinubu, I beg your pardon, to reverse decision. Bandits kill vigilante leader, 17 others in Zamfara. And on the foreign scene, Sudan army suspends participation in Jeddah ceasefire talks. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. And now the news in detail. The Nigeria Labour Congress has rejected the price of fuel fixed by the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited. President of the NLC, Joe Ajero, stated this while briefing journalists at Labour House in Abuja. He said fixing of price is not what government can unilaterally do. The government on Wednesday released new fuel prices for the different geopolitical zones and states with the FCT buying for as much as 537 naira per litre. The Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited has confirmed an upward review of palm price of petrol. Gerba Dean Mohammed, Chief Corporate Communications Officer, NNPC Limited, confirmed this in a statement on Wednesday afternoon. The statement says the palm price of PMS have been adjusted across retail outlets in line with current market realities. It says the company will strive to provide quality service for which NNPC is known for, noting that prices will continue to fluctuate to reflect market dynamics. The statement said the company sincerely regrets any inconvenience the development may have caused. Nigerians walk to reports of upward review of fuel price from 197 naira to above 500 naira per litre. A fueling station in Katsina is dispensing fuel at the rate of 670 naira per litre, even as residents blame the fuel shortage being experienced across the country on President Bola Tinubu's inaugural address last Monday. Katsina residents, mostly low-income earners, call for caution in resolving fuel subsidy, saying the goodwill of Nigerians for the new administrations should not be allowed to fade away even before the government is fully constituted. Abdullah Yamadi completes the report. The return of long fuel queues has created apprehension and uncertainties. Katsina residents are now worried that Fuel is now beyond the ordinary person calling on President Bola Tinibu not to fail poor Nigerians. A check at one of the filling stations shows fuel selling at 670 naira per litre, a situation many residents say is a calculated attempt to compound an already difficult economic situation for the people. So we have found ourselves in the same difficult situation here which we are not happy at this so that uh, we are calling federal government of Nigeria to at least intervene immediately for the life to be easier for the people and the fuel price I never expect this things I enter an NPC today and the price of fuel price and the price is 540 540 per liter and other station private station is getting 600 some place is 650. So this situation, we are in such situation. Uh, my call to the government is that they should pity the masses because people are suffering. To even eat is a problem in this country. The food price has gone up. Transport fares and other commercial activities have already been affected by the fuel price hike with prices of necessities skyrocketing. It's an advice that they should do something that uh, will reduce the pain of we, the masses. Like now, I'm loading to Abuja. Uh, before, corn was 600, 650. But now, as I just came to buy, they are telling me that it's 850 and it's not funny at all. The story of fuel shortage in Funtua, Daura, Molomfashi, Tukankia, Duzima, and Mani are the same. Political commentators say 
in a democracy, economic policies like fuel subsidy removal supposed to be publicly debated and the National Assembly invited to join the executive before a final decision is taken. Though many Nigerians are on the same page with the government on subsidy removal, but economists are also warning that Nigeria has low-income earners who constitute the majority that may hardly withstand its effects. Governor Dikwarada met with officials of independent petroleum marketers in the state and directed all filling stations to open for business with immediate effect. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Katana. Similarly, Governor Sharif Oborewari of a Delta State has cautioned fuel marketers in the state against hoarding of petroleum products, especially premium moto spirits. Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Festus Ahong, in a statement on Tuesday in Asaba, quoted Governor Oborewari as saying that the state government will not tolerate acts that would make life difficult for Deltans. Ahon said the state government's desire is to grow the economy of the state through its more agenda. He therefore solicited the support of all stakeholders in his determination to make life more meaningful for Deltans. He said the state government had been inundated with reports of filling stations in the state, hoarding products and creating artificial scarcity with intent to hike price. The Delta State Governor, who views the action of these marketers as unpatriotic as well as an economic war against the people of the state, however, called on marketers to be patriotic and continue selling their products to the general public at the official pump price. On security, no fewer than 18 persons, including a vigilante leader, have been reportedly killed in separate attacks on communities under Ruan Urua ward of Maru local government area in Zamfara state. An eyewitness, Aminu Iliasu, who is a member of the local vigilante group known as Yen Sakai, said that the armed bandits had targeted the vigilante leader of Ngamji community. He said the vigilante leader, Dahirut Angamji, was killed alongside three other persons in his hideout inside the bush around Anzara community. He added that when the news of Dahiru's death got to the community, members of the vigilante group in Ruan Urua quickly mobilized to the area, but they were ambushed by bandits along the road. Although police authorities in the state are yet to confirm the incident when contacted, the acting P public relations officer of Zamfir State Police Command, ASP Yazid Abubakar, said the command is yet to receive any report of the incident. Another resident, Abdullah Hirwan Urua, said the bandits afterwards moved to Arafa community and neighboring settlement where they killed three persons, including one 20 year old Murtala Husseini, Sani Mansur, and Abu Boss. Kano State Police Command has arrested 93 suspects in connection with mobile phone robbery and other criminal activities across the state. Addressing a news conference, the command's police commissioner, Mohamed Gumel, said the suspects were arrested within the last one week. Trust TV's correspondent, Idris Jibrin, has the report. Prior to the inauguration of new government, the police in Kano launched a special operation aimed at ensuring the successful conduct of the exercise, the results of which led to the arrest of these suspects in connection with various crimes. Mobile phone robbery. A number of 11 incidences were reported. 56 suspects were arrested and 18 number of mobile phones recovered. And totally, and 157 various types of weapons they use in robbing these items were also recovered. Those arrested include 56 suspected mobile phone snatchers, 27 suspected drug dealers, and 20 suspects in connection with motor vehicle theft and fraud. Illicit drug and substances recoveries. Six number of incidences were recorded during the period and 17 suspects arrested and 
five sachet of suspected tramadol tablets, 83 sachet of suspected diazepam tablet, 371 pieces of rubber solution, 12 parcels and 303 rods of dried leaves suspected to be in the hair, and one tablet sachet of suspected tramadol tablet, six packet and 17 sachet of suspected exol tablet were all recovered. According to the command, most of these suspects are saboteurs and sponsored criminals found in possession of dangerous weapons while acting under the influence of drugs. Brought, a number of incidences were also recovered, uh, recorded. Sorry. Out of this, total of nine incidences were in our record, and a number of 20 suspects also arrested. As we recovered include four locally made guns, one toy gun, two motor vehicles, two motorcycles, two plasma television, two generators, 34 ATM cards, and 23 cartons of agro-allied chemicals. While assuring the police commitment in the fight against crimes, these suspects will be charged to court as soon as investigations are completed into their alleged crimes. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. An upper Sharia court in Bochi state has issued a bench warrant against Islamic cleric Ibra Imam uh, Idris Abdelaziz Dutant Enshi for non-appearance at court in a case instituted by police bordering on comments capable of inciting public disturbance in the state. The presiding judge, Hussein Itaraki, gave the order after hearing submissions from the two parties. Trust TV's Adamu Imam covers the court proceedings and now reports. Heavy security is visible around the upper Sharia court in view of the sensitivity of today's proceedings. The cleric was granted bail by a magistrate court where he was arraigned, but the case was later transferred to the upper Sharia court. Though his lawyers were in court, the accused was absent. The presiding judge, after hearing arguments from the prosecution and the defense counsel, held that the cleric be produced in court and answer charges leveled against him. Unfortunately, the defendants have not come to court, but they have filed a notice of preliminary objection challenging the jurisdiction of court. We have argued that he is first as he had before the court before they now put their objection challenging the jurisdiction. So we applied to the judge against him since he has refused to come to court. The defense counsel has argued that the upper Sharia court lacks jurisdiction to hear and determine the matter and that the arrest warrant application be dismissed, but he was not successful. Because there was transfer, the case was transferred from the magistrate to the court one to the court. I mean, the upper Sharia court one here in Bochi. I supposed to start the noble formation. And it happened that the defendant, our client, was not informed. And uh, we informed the court about the reason of his absence that he's not he's sick. That's why he cannot attend the trial. And uh, that, uh, apart from that, we undertook to produce my diversity that the court should give him another grace because this is the first time the matter is coming up. So an opportunity should be given to us for him to come to court. And they objected, saying that he disobeyed the order of the court. He did not respect the summons of the court. He refused to the court. Just a question. So the court, after hearing the argument of both sides, they give a ruling that a bench warrant is issued against him. Imam Abdulaziz was accused of comments capable of inciting public disturbance. The case is adjourned to June 5th for continuation of the hearing. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Following the dissolution of the disciplinary committee of the park management system in Oyo State, led by Mukaila Lamidi, popularly known as Auxiliary, police authorities have arrested 78 suspects and recovered assorted arms, ammunition and charms. Similarly, security agents have appealed to citizens of the state to furnish them with useful information that could lead to the arrest of the former park manager, Mukaila Lamidi, who is set to be on the run. 
The State Commissioner of Police, Adebowale Williams, gave the charge in Ibadan during a parade of the suspects where he assured residents of adequate security. The report. The obvious shock and surprise on the faces of onlookers and police officers who had come to catch a glimpse of the large seizure of arms, ammunition, jam and other dangerous weapons intercepted during midnight stink operation on the hotel facility of former chairman park management system, Mokaila Lamidi, sent cold shivers down the spine of all present at this parade. To the above, today, 30 Tuesday, 35, 2023, in a strategic intelligence coordinated raid around its location at Diamond Hotel, Alakia Isebo, under a better local government area. 78 suspected Ulus who had perfected plans to unleash mayhem at the early hours of today at major parks of the metropolis were arrested in possession of sophisticated weapons. 724 cartridges, assorted charms, 33 mobile phones, and a sum cash of about 3,450,000 naira. The clampdown is coming hours after the state government dissolved the disciplinary committee of the park management system and the police said the 78 suspect had perfected plans to cause trouble within the state. During the raid, some firearms were recovered inside the hotel rooms and in the trunk compartment of the parked vehicles within the hotel. Worthy of note is that though the PMS chieftain was able to escape with some of his boys during the gun duel with the police, however, a member of the group was neutralized in the gun drive with the police. In furtherance of the above, Oyo State Police Command, under my constructive leadership, retraces unwavering commitment towards tackling criminal rascality, hooliganism, and blatant disregard for the rule of law. Consequent on the above, the Oyo State Police Command enjoins residents to cooperate with the police with the provision of useful information to help apprehend the sad DMS chieftain. Cash running into millions of naira, champs, dangerous weapons as well as arms and ammunition still litter the street, and the security agents here have promised to smoke out all criminal elements hell-bent on disrupting the peace in Nigerian peace setter state, or your. To achieve this, the police are calling for synergy from members of the public to put an end to the needless loss of precious lives and property. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. We take a look at the optimal advantage of milk value chain. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Trust News Update. Here's a recap of our top stories. We told you that NLC rejects NNPC fuel price template as queues persist. You also heard that fuel sells for 670 Naira in Katsana. Residents ask President Tinubu to reverse decision. 
Moving on to politics, Governor Nasir Idris of Kebi State has dissolved the State Executive Council, boards of agencies, parastatals and all political appointees inherited from the immediate past Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu. The governor has also approved the appointment of Atahiro Machido as Chief of Staff, Yakubu Bala as Secretary to the State Government, and Aminu Musa Nko as Personal Assistant. A statement signed by Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Ahmed Idris, said the governor has also appointed Aliyu Bandado Argungu as Special Advisor on New Media, Ahmed Idris as Press Secretary, Umar Shehu Baiti as Senior Special Assistant on Protocol and Yahya Serki as Special Advisor on Media and Publicity. The statement added that all the appointments are based on merit and track records of the appointees and are effective May 29, 2023. World Milk Day is marked in Abuja with a call on the federal government to collaborate with private sector towards sustaining and boosting dairy production in Nigeria. Habibat Ajayi reports that government is set to engage farmers, stakeholders in dairy production and it, with international best practices, knowledge and tips for them to take optimal advantage of milk value chain. The report. Every year World Milk Day is commemorated to mark the importance and contribution of milk to nutrition. This year's day theme is Sustainable Dairy, Good for Planet, Good for You. Winning Laisha Lanre, Director of Animal Husband and Services, Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development says, policies and measures have been put in place towards expanding the dairy industry creating a neighbor environment for international investors. Recently, FEC, the Federal Executive Council, approved the national dairy policy. For instance, that gives us guidelines and direction on where we are going. That's the first thing. Before that dairy policy, we had a NATIP, the National Agricultural Technology and Innovation Policy. That also gave the foundation for the dairy policy. Now that we have a policy, we are now refocusing the dairy industry. Before now, we have focused our attention on collecting wholesome milk. We have provided milk collection center every part of this country where we can collect milk. So government has put in place that national livestock transformation plan and several programs under it. Another one is we are focusing on climate smart livestock production so that we don't pollute our environment. We are mopping up grains, mopping up raw materials that, uh, that will have been wasted, alternative feed resources, converting them to animal feed. Speaking at the event, the Director General of Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, FMAD, Victoria Akpan, says government is mapping out ways for financing dairy production. We are also interested in the security aspect. We believe that if the country takes ranching seriously, then in fact the issues around um, herdsmen, will, the, the arguments between herdsmen and um, farmers, yes, the crisis will really reduce and then there will probably be a better peaceful coexistence. So yes, we are very excited and we look forward to this, you know, improving and bringing on better uh, livestock business in Nigeria. We cannot uh, overestimate um, uh, the importance of milk in the life of children and uh, um, uh, the dairy sector. And it's, it's important to the economy generally. We can't estimate the importance because there are different value chains in that regard. There are players in that regard. And we want, you know, the, 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 the sector to actually thrive better than it is doing. However, stakeholders at the event advise parents to ensure that children consume locally processed milk in view of its vital nutrients required for elderly living. Abibat Ajayi, Trust TV, Abuja. 
The French government has reiterated its readiness to partner the Quara state government on agriculture and education to ensure food security and enhanced education. The French Minister of Trade for Development, Francophone and International Partnership, Dr. Chrysoula Zakaropolo, stated this during the signing of two agreements between the state and French government at Government House Ilorin. The report. All right, we apologize for not bringing that report. But moving on to the foreign scene, Sudan's army has suspended its participation in talks over a ceasefire and humanitarian access, raising fears of renewed fighting that has displaced tens of thousands of people. The talks with the rival paramilitary rapid support forces began in Saudi Arabian port city of Jeddah in early May and had produced a declaration of commitments to protecting civilians and two short-term ceasefire deals that have repeatedly been violated. The army and the RSF had agreed to extend a week-long ceasefire deal by five days just before it was due to expire late on Monday. Until late Tuesday, intense clashes were reported in Sudan's capital Khartoum, with residents reporting intensive fighting in all three of the adjoining cities that make up Sudan's greater capital around the confluence of the Nile, Khartoum, Omduran, and Khartoum North. The truce was brokered and is being remotely monitored by Saudi Arabia and United States, which say it has been violated by both sides but has allowed for the delivery of aid. The war has forced nearly 1.4 million people to flee their homes, including more than 350,000 who have crossed the neighboring countries. More than six weeks into the conflict, the United Nations estimated more than half the population, that's 25 million people, to be in need of aid and protection. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashen Hussein Al Usman. Thanks for watching.